Hello, future La Salle doctors. My name is Vanessa, and I'm a fourth year medical student in De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute College of Medicine. And in my previous video, we talked about how DLS MHSI teaches medicine to students during the pre pandemic years or pre COVID era. In this video, we will talk about how DLS MHSI coped up with the online learning system because of the current pandemic that we're in. We will be answering questions like, how are lectures given? How do we take our exams? And what happens if there's a power interruption or there's poor internet connection, which happens so many times. Uh. But before we do so, if you're new to my channel, please click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're updated with all of my latest uploads. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any more questions or suggestions for my next content. So let's get started. For asynchronous learning, we log on to our Moodle account at cm.dlshsi.edu.ph where we can find all of our lectures organized into modules. A student simply needs to click on a lecture where it will direct you to your Microsoft Office account where you log in your username and password in order to view the lectures. Once you've opened the lecture video, you may choose to view it on full screen and you may even edit the speed of the lecture so that you can view it in a faster rate or even a slower rate. After watching the lecture and reading all of the prerequisite readings, you must go back to Moodle to answer a simple task, which is equivalent to a quiz. So I will give you a closer look at our Moodle interface. So if you look here at the top portion, you will see first year, second year, third year, and fourth year. I can only open the third year button and it will give you all of the courses under third year. And since we shifted into a modular type of curriculum, this is how our schedule looks like. For example, in week one of second semester, January 4th onward, we will have all of the lectures for cardiology module. You can see here, the Department of Pediatrics will give all of their lectures and then the radiology department and then internal medicine department pharmacology and you go back to internal medicine and radiology that's for week one of the cardiology module right and if you can look here these are all of the lectures the handouts the and some of them provided um, supplemental learnings for for the different heart sounds that you can click and it will download right away you could listen to the different heart sounds Right? And if you click here, uh, if you look here, you can see the uh, online lectures, the recorded online lectures, and then you have two quizzes that you need to answer after having studied these online lectures. Let's look at the handout. Provides a tabulated summary of all of the congenital heart diseases and what you need to know. So let's look at the heart sounds that we downloaded here. So I don't know if you could hear that. But right now, we are playing the sound of atrial septal defect, systolic ejection murmur. Lecturers will also upload video demonstrations for topics that require hands-on knowledge, such as surgical procedures. There are a lot of supplemental learnings that you can get from the Moodle interface. So, and if you click on the simple task, let's for example, let's click on this simple task, simple task one. So there's a five point quiz. Uh, in the simple task, it's really a honesty system. You know, you have to really train yourself not to look at the lectures while answering these simple tasks. Anyway, if you cheat on these simple tasks, you're really just cheating yourself because you're cheating your learning. Let me just show you the discussion board right here for January 6th. All of the students can just post their questions for coronary artery disease. Just click there and post your question. Diagnostic imaging and pericardial effusion. Just post there. Just click there and type in your question. Myocarditis. And the lecturer will right away respond to the question. 
they will respond here in the in the discussion board and they will further explain the answers during the synchronous meeting at the end of the week if you remember the the schedule here you see that there is a synchronous feedback session on the second day and there's another synchronous feedback session on Thursday. This gives the students an opportunity to ask their questions live or synchronously with all of the consultants present. And the lecturers can explain further verbally to the students or they can even use their PowerPoint presentations to share their screen or share their presentations to further explain difficult concepts. I'll show you how we take examinations in this online class era. You need a Microsoft Teams app and you need the Moodle app. The Microsoft Teams app is where the proctor will watch you very closely, your screen, your surroundings, and your where you're looking at so that they know if you're just looking at the screen or you're looking somewhere else to cheat. Your microphone has to be turned on so that they know if someone else is in the room with you telling you the answers. And you need to give them a full 360 degrees view of your room and Underneath your table, underneath your laptop, you need to show your wrists, your palms, your ears so that you, they know that you don't have any my earphones or ear pods on your ears. You will have to show your entire table and there should be no pieces of paper, books, textbooks, iPad, or any other gadgets around while you're taking the exam. Now an important question, what happens if we lose power or we lose internet connection during an exam or during a synchronous session. This actually happened to me. While I was taking the exam, there was a typhoon, so the, there was an emergency power interruption. What will happen is your proctor will call you to confirm what happened and you can report that you have had a power interruption. You need to have cellular data so that you can still connect to the internet and continue your exam. But you have to reconnect within 15 minutes. If you fail to reconnect within 15 minutes, then you will have to take the makeup exam. In order to take a makeup exam, you need to send a letter to the vice dean providing proof of power interruption or internet connection failure. Unfortunately, not all departments allow for makeup sessions in the ward work. For example, in ophthalmology, they allow makeup sessions, but in internal medicine, there is no makeup session for ward works. So what do you have to do? You have to make sure that when there is a scheduled ward work, you have electricity and you have good internet connection. What if there's a scheduled power interruption? Then you have to move to a different place where there is electricity. In my case, <laughs> In my case, there was a scheduled power interruption for an internal medicine ward work. So what I did is I went to an electrical power plant to make sure that I would have electricity during the ward work session. Can you believe that I did internal medicine ward work in an electrical power plant? That is something that you will only experience during a pandemic. And some of my batchmates went to their cousin's house. Some of my batchmates went to different cities just to get good electricity and good internet connection. It's not really a bad thing because we're training to become doctors and if there's one thing that I learned in the pandemic it is that as a doctor you need to be flexible you need to be strong and you need to be able to work under pressure and you need to be prepared to do whatever it takes to be there for your patients so during ward works although it's a virtual ward work we still treat these ward works as real patients so you have to do whatever it takes to be there for your patients. If you need to go to a power plant, if you need to go to a different city, then do it. Not for your grade, but for your training and for your patients. Aside from Moodle and MS Teams, the first year medicine students also had the complete anatomy from Elsevier. You may choose to download it on your laptop, on your iPad, or even on your phone, and it's quite easy to use. There's also a radiology section where students may view radiographic slides of different body regions. You may also go on our website, www.dlshsi.edu.ph, to access the online library. Just go to Academics. And under Academics, you'll see Romeo P. Arriniego, MD, AFSC Library. 
and go under the library tab to click the online resources and under there you'll find access medicine which is really helpful for medicine students access pharmacy physiotherapy clinical key complete anatomy EBSCOhost for research net anatomy and there's also up-to-date Wiley Online Library and other online resources that are very helpful for research and for other study needs. The third year and fourth year medical students also use the DXR clinician. Here you'll be able to practice on different cases from different departments, either surgery, internal medicine, pediatrics, and so on. My group was assigned to an internal medicine case where we handled a patient with chief complaint of pain in the extremities. Here you will be able to practice your history taking, your physical exam, making your SOAP notes, and diagnosis, and management, and so on. A tutorial video is also available on the application or on YouTube so that you'll be able to know how to do the physical exam part and even ordering laboratory tests and so on. Our guidance counselors are also very much available during these trying times. You may contact them through their Facebook page or through MS Teams for online or virtual counseling. If a student is not feeling well and needs to talk to a doctor, the school clinic is also available in their Facebook page. A student simply needs to send a message and the school nurse or the school doctor will get in touch with them immediately. And lastly, one of the greatest things that happened this year is that before the start of our internship year, all incoming interns and medical clerks were vaccinated. Woo! This happened last June 2 to June 4 of 2021 and we received the AstraZeneca vaccine or the Sinovac vaccine. So that's it for today's vlog. If you have any questions about the degree programs, about admission, about scholarship, or any questions at all, please check the description below for contact details or visit our website to find out more. And if you haven't seen my first video about the College of Medicine, please do check out that video by clicking this link right here. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. This has been Vanessa telling you that if you believe in yourself, you're already halfway there. Thanks guys and see you in my next vlog.